a wonderful stable. I have several stables, but this is by far the most intriguing, and it has a wonderful history. <clears throat> I got this stable in Newport in 1978 with an antique shop. It had come, presumably, from one of the Vanderbilt mansions, from the nursery or playroom or something. And it's elaborate enough, it must have been so. It's a horse stable, presumably, there are stalls, and wonderful horses, carved horses' heads, uh, just under the roof line. The little horse in the middle window is, has a wonderful history. It's one of a series of little animals carved in Switzerland by Swiss wood carvers, so fragile and tiny. And we have a whole little set of boxes with those animals in them that my great-great-aunt got when she was in Switzerland about 1888 or 1889. But I've got, I thought it was appropriate to have that little horse to symbolize that this is a horse stable. Now, there are some wonderful animals in there. For example, first of all, let me point out that we call this stable the lambs of the stable and it's used also as kind of a, uh, what do I want to call it? A little chapel, the chapel of the lands of the stable. And every time at Christmas or at Easter, we have, bring all the dolls in, and they, and they are the animals, just like the Bethlehem. Um, there are some wonderful animals there. The sheep, the man standing in Mexican dress, actually, that uh, he is from the Southwest, and we think he's from Mexico, and he's very rich. He's, he's descended from Maximilian and the Empress Carlotta, who didn't fare too well in Mexico. They took it over for a time, and then they were thrown out. But we'll say he's the descendant of Maximilian. And he's going to marry the lady who's sitting in the seat there sometimes. She's a very rich, another one of the rich wooden dolls that we have. She lives in a beautiful house in the other room called Swanhurst, which was a real house at Newport, where I once had a public theater, which has now been torn down and there's a house lost there. The light-colored animals, the, the sheep, which is under the hand of uh, Prince Maximilian is one of several animals. I've got another lamb in one of these stalls here. I've got several of those, and I got them in New York uh, about 1936. I was coming home for Christmas, and, and I was in New York on the weekend. And going by a toy shop, I went in and they had these wonderful Soviet, they were made carved in Russia, and a stamp, Soviet or Russia. Um, I, I'm very fond of sheep, I have a cow, and the other horses that look similar, however, uh, were carved here in Lancaster by a man whose granddaughter knew us, and she gave me those animals. The animated figure that looks like a shepherd at Christmas time was also bought in New York at the same time I bought the animals. And he always seemed to represent Christmas to me, or a she, no, it's he. And my grandmother dressed him just in time for Christmas Eve. And uh, that was in 1936. My grandmother died in 1942, and of course we've never changed his costume because she loved these things. She was uh, she loved the miniature stuff. Now, the man with the drum and another man we can't quite see are probably the rarest of the wooden figures that I have. And I have one I can't find. Maybe you know where it is, Paul. Yeah. It's in the other room. Yeah. And uh, these represent, this was part of a whole set that a dealer brought over from Italy was found in Venice, 
It represents members of the Royal Italian Ballet on their way to Bethlehem to play at the birthnight of our Lord. Uh, they really have very elaborate costumes, and the drum belongs to that man. There's another one there somewhere that I can't quite see from here, but he's there. And uh, I have another one or two elsewhere that I can't seem to put my hands on. They're right here somewhere, however. And I love them at Christmas time because there's a much a part of the Christmas story. Ballet, royal ballet from Italy on the way to Bethlehem to play at the Christmas birth night. I think that's pretty intriguing. And somewhere around the end of the 18th, 18, end of the 17th or the beginning of the 18th century, they were well documented. Um, the little woolly lambs were very popular when I was a child, and uh, I got a few of those in there. There's a wonderful sheep in one of these other places. There's a little, a little pulpit in this end part here, with a minister sort of all in white. He's bald, and his name is Father Baldwin. <laughs> for obvious reasons. But he'll be conducting the wedding. We can't decide yet whether they have a wedding in the stable, but I think no, it'll be in the gardens over a great mansion, Swanhurst. Now what, there, what year do you think the stable is? Well, I bought, bought it was it had long been in the in one of the Vanderbilt houses. And of course there were Vanderbilt still living in Newport in nineteen seventy eight, mm -hmm. or descendants. But this had come from one of their houses, or they were clearing out, or may have come from one of their city houses. Anyway, it turned up. But it is associated with the Vanderbilt family, and it is associated with Newport. And how old do you think? Oh, I imagine this is, um, it looks like every fair stable surrounded here mm -hmm. that great mansions had. So I'd say, 1900s to 19, World War One, maybe, uh, in much, that period of time. How much did you pay for it? Um, I had kind of forgotten. It wasn't a tremendous amount. They were just trying to get rid of this stuff, mm -hmm. this antique shop. And so I didn't pay a tremendous amount. It needed some work, as you can probably judge. and. Uh, as a matter of fact, you made one of the horses' heads, didn't you? Mm -hmm. the, other, the other head was intact, and you had to repair the one. Of the, I think you had to remake it. But it worked out very well, and everybody loves it. There's something about a stable and animals that are very intriguing. I've got the horses in every stall, and I have a wonderful pony cat that was given to me by a family here in Lancaster who were very wealthy, and they children had that kind of toy, and it's a wonderful point cat. And the horses in one of those stalls fit the pony cat. And we've had, I think, the horses still with the pony cat. And she's riding in it. Miss, this is a very wealthy lady who lives at Swanhurst. Her name is Miss Copley. Like Copley Plaza. <laughs> I have a little story for everything. Inside, there's a wonderful family that I got with Kenneth. We were, we'd gone down to get that house. You know, the one that I call, um, it was a, it's a square house um, going down the stairs. Kenneth and I went down to get that. And somewhere where we were that day, I think it was I can't remember just where it was. It was in Framingham, I think. They had these figures, and there was a grandfather and grandmother, a father and a mother, and two children. So I call it, I call them Ephraim and Mariah Avery, that's my great grandparents, and George and Caroline Avery, that's my grandparents, and the two children are Elizabeth and Winthrop, my mother. An uncle. They're just perfect. You can take them out if you want to and show them. I got it up close. Okay. We have a very nice doll's house. 
we're going to call Green Pastures Farm. We want to dedicate it next week or sometime because it's going to represent the house where the Peabody sisters lived, and they lived here in, in Lancaster. The Peabody sisters became famous. Mary Elizabeth Peabody started public education in Massachusetts. Mary Peabody married Horace Mann, and they founded Antioch College. And Sophia Peabody married Nathaniel Hawthorne. So they were a remarkable family. They lived here and often said the happiest years of their life were those years they spent in Lancaster. So we have a, a wonderful house that's going to be their house called Green Pastures Farm on the still waters. I think you get the implication. Uh, still waters, he making me to lie down in green pastures, he just moved beside the still waters, is from the 23rd Psalm. It seemed appropriate because that's exactly where the house was. It was in green pastures, not far from the Nashville River, which in that part they call the still, still waters. It's a great uh, you know, little stories that add to the mm-hmm. houses of fun. But that, that father and mother, grandfather and grandmother, father and mother, and the two little, little boy and little girl, are really interesting to be dressed. We, I've got pictures of Green Pastures Farm with them all in the, out in front of it and around it, which were used for a Christmas display at the Lancaster Town Library in the children's room the year that I've got it, which I think was 80. I guess 88. Mm-hmm. Kenneth works on that with me, you know. You know Kenneth. 